Hey there, um, I have another project for you and this is more for the older students. Um, it is working with foil and cardboard pieces and even some twine or some string. And something like this is called a sculpture in relief because it's three dimensional on one side but flat on the other side. So that is what you call a sculpture and relief. To make this, you're going to need to have a couple things which I know you probably have around the house, some aluminum foil, um, some Elmer's glue, white, I just happen to have wood glue here, scissors for cutting, pencil and eraser, things for tracing circles, maybe a ruler, and some black paint, which um, I have some mixed in here with water and a little bit of soap detergent, just a drop. Anyway, so we'll set that over there. But to get started, you're gonna need a piece of cardboard. And some of you might say, well, I don't have any cardboard in the house, but maybe you have boxes in the house, like here was a box for the Red Lobster Biscuits and it was empty. I cut out, um, I opened up the box and I have a flat piece here that I'm gonna use. And what you want to do is that's going to be your base. And then with the other pieces of your box that came with it, you can cut out shapes and um, glue them onto the base. So I'm being inspired by nature lately. So I'm going to cut out maybe a sort of a leaf shape here. And then I'm going to take some glue and glue the back of that like this. And I'm going to arrange it on my cardboard. And probably, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe what I will do is I'll start using the other side of this. Why don't I use that so then you can see the color. All right, and then I'm going to, let's see, let me trace a circle. Here we go. And cut that out. Like this. And this takes a little while to do this project because first you have to make your composition with cardboard and then you have to let it dry. And then once it's dried, then you can cover it with a foil. And then the final step is to paint it with black paint and then rub it out. So here is my circle. I keep doing the wrong side for you. All right, so that's what I have so far. And let's see, maybe I'd like um, maybe a, a long strip of paper like this. And perhaps I want to bring this over here. I think I'm going to round out my edges. This looks like a reed. And something like this. And this time I am going to let the colored part show for you. Like this. And put the glue on. Put enough glue on here so that it sticks. I think this wood glue sticks pretty well. Probably better than the regular Elmer's glue, but just so happened that's the only thing I had right now. And let's see, I can continue working on my composition here. When you're doing a composition, you might want to repeat some shapes. Maybe you want to have some other circle shapes in here. Maybe you would like to have another leaf type of shape. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut another leaf shape like this because that helps to unify your composition. And put some glue on here. And then I want to show you how you can glue some twine onto your background. Oh, there it went. I keep doing the wrong side. Nope, that side I got right. All right, so maybe I'm gonna put that right in there like this. And watch how you can take a piece of twine First, make a line of glue where you want the twine to be, like this, and coming over in here, 
like that. And then I'm gonna take my twine. I happen to have packaging twine. Maybe you have yarn, or maybe you have string, or maybe you don't have any. Maybe you could use an old shoestring for this. That might be interesting. So you just use what you have at home, and that will be good enough. And I'm gonna cut this right in here. Okay, so there's another thing you can add to your composition. Now, I'm not finished with this, but I wanna show you the next step. So over here, I have one that I did yesterday, and I have a composition here of geometric shapes. I have some skinny white lines and another one coming over here. I have some triangles, I have some circles, and then I have my piece of twine running through there. As you can see, this was a cereal box. So anyway, it's all, it's now glued down. It's not wet anymore, and here I made an arrow too. I like my composition because the arrow is pointing to the right and so are the lines, but then we also have this triangle pointing down to the left. So it makes your eye go all around the composition. Once that's finished, I'm gonna take a piece of aluminum foil, get that ready, and then what you wanna do is you wanna put glue onto your cardboard design like this. So I'm coming in here and making sure that every part of this design is covered in glue like this. Now, I, would, I know some of you are thinking really detailed. I would try to keep this simple try not to get too detailed because it just makes it a little hard when you put the foil on so we'll see how this one works okay now let me put my foil and you want the dull side facing the cardboard you want the shiny side facing the front so you lay that on there like this now watch what you have to do. You have to press this carefully with your fingers. You do not want to be too rough with this because you don't want to make a hole in the foil. So I'm coming around in here. You can see the edges of this. You can really see the twine coming out. And now I'm coming in here with the cardboard pieces. You can see that. There's those cardboard um, strips appearing and here's a triangle over here and let's see I have a triangle over here oh nope that's not the triangle that is the arrow there's my arrow here is a triangle over in here and over in here is a triangle so you just keep rubbing this until you really can see your image Okay, just like this. And what you can do is you can fold this back like this, and maybe put a little glue on here in the back. Have this stick right in here. Like you're wrapping a present really easy with a foil and over in here okay hope you have fun with this project to tell you the truth I never did this before but I've seen other schools do this for an art project and I always thought it looked pretty interesting and it requires very little material and it's usually stuff that you might have at home that's why I picked this. And right in here. So now we'll go back to the front of this. Okay, so the next step is to paint this with your black paint. And 
let me get a newspaper which I have right here. You don't want to get this on your, your mom's table or your desk or wherever you're working. So, like I said, this is acrylic paint and I added some water to it and I also added a little bit of dish detergent. The dish detergent helps it to stick onto the foil. And brush that on and then this has to dry. So we'll brush that on there like that. And I really miss teaching everybody in class but I'm glad I can do this so that maybe it'll give you a new idea of something to do at home. Hopefully you're painting rocks and maybe you are sketching. Maybe you're making a craft, maybe you're making a bird feeder. All right, so now when this is all coated on here evenly like that, then it needs to dry. And I'm going to use a hair dryer here to see if I can speed up the drying. Good. We have to turn it on. And acrylic paint dries pretty fast, so hopefully at least maybe part of this will dry and I can show you the next step. Alright, I just want to talk about the next step. Here's one that I did and as you can see, my black paint wasn't on as thick as this one, but it still has a neat texture look to it. And what you want to do when this is dry is you want to take um, a cloth, a, it could be a dishcloth, it could be um, a sponge, and wet it slightly or a paper towel. And what you want to do is you want to wipe off the paint on the shapes that you have. So here I wiped off the paint on these shapes um, and I took a sponge that has a rough edge and a smooth edge and I went over my twine like this and then I took a sharpie marker and it, this reminded me of a G clef so I decided to make some musical notes in there and drawing right on here like that and so this is my finished artwork and I can't wait to see what this one's going to look like and it still looks like, yeah, it's still pretty wet. But anyway, um, maybe I'll post this one when it's all finished. But here you can see what you need to do. You need to wipe out your objects with a damp paper towel or cloth or a sponge with a rough edge. And there you have it, your foil sculpture and relief. So I hope you have fun making this today.